Lately, there has been plenty of talk in the news about recession and whether is it coming or is it not coming, and often cited metric when talking about the pending recession is the inverted yield curve. Today, I want to talk about what an inverted yield curve is and why it's often used in predicting recessions. So let's go ahead and dive into it. First, we should define what a yield is. And a yield is essentially the rate of return an investor expects to receive from a financial asset. Typically, the financial asset is a bond. For example, a 5% yield means the bond would give you a 5% return per year until the last year when the bond is fully repaid by the issuer. Then you get your 5% interest plus the return of your principal of the bond. So looking at a more detailed example, using that 5%, let's say you have a thousand dollar bond with a 10 year maturity. Each year you'd receive your $50 in interest, which is 1000 times 5%. And in year 10, you get your principal back as well. And the total interest you earned over those 10 years would be $500. Now, when we discuss the inverted yield curve, we refer to U.S. Treasuries as the financial asset of interest. U.S. Treasuries are bonds that are issued by the U.S. government, and they are issued at different maturities, which is essentially, you know, the different time frames in which they will be repaid by the U.S. Treasury. Now, treasuries with longer maturities are typically considered riskier for two main reasons. First, there is a higher probability that a government will not fully repay the amount they owe, which is known as credit risk. This risk is usually low, especially for the U.S., but if you've been paying attention to the news lately, the U.S. has come dangerously close to default as a result of political maneuverings. But in general, it shouldn't happen, and ultimately it's relatively low. And in fact, the U.S. has never defaulted on their treasury debts. Now, longer maturities are also exposed to more interest rate risk. Essentially, this means that interest rates have more time to go up in the future, which could cause your held asset to be worth less if you had to sell it on the market. Now, this, the important point here is this only matters if you plan to sell it before maturity. If you hold it to the expiration of its lifetime, then you get your full principal back and your all the interest that you made off the instrument as well. But of course you are making less interest rate than maybe current assets would offer if interest rates rise in the future and you hold your asset that has a lower interest rate. Okay, so since these longer treasuries are riskier, investors would expect to get a higher return from those financial instruments. Therefore, if we take the yields, the rate of the return of these treasuries at different maturities and graph these values, we would get the sort of yield curve for the US. And typically it should look like an upward sloping line. So as maturity gets higher, you would expect the interest rate to also be higher than shorter term assets. So an inverted yield curve occurs when the rate of return demanded by investors is higher for short term maturities than for long term maturities. So in this case, it would be a downward sloping line like the one you see on the, the screen now. So you may be wondering, how does this happen? And the reason for this inversion occurs is due to interest rate expectations. So when interest rates are expected to go down in the future, we will see higher interest rates now than further out in the future on these different treasury bonds that are being issued. The future expectations are measured through various economic models that exist, and it'll kind of map out what people believe interest rates are going to do in the future. Looking at the current situation, the current interest rate is about 5.25%. And when looking at some models, we see it is expected to drop to about three and a quarter percent by 2025. 
So keep in mind, the yield of treasuries is closely linked to the interest rate target set by the Federal Reserve. Investors expect a rate of return above the interest rate depending on the risk level of the bond. Since U.S. treasuries are considered to be one of the safest assets, their rate of return is very close to the interest rate set by the Federal Reserve. And the expectations of those models are really modeling the interest rate targets set by the Federal Reserve and what they expect will happen in the future. So when interest rates are expected to be lower in the future, i.e. the next 10 years, the rate of return on longer term treasuries is lower than those of shorter term treasuries. And that's when we get the inverted yield curve. The most common way to measure the inverted yield curve is by taking the spread or the difference between the 10 year treasury and the two year treasury. Okay, so why does this make the inverted yield curve a predictor of recession and why are falling interest rates linked to recession? To answer this, we have to look at why the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates in the first place. And the main reason they do so is to stimulate economic activity. With lower interest rates, it is cheaper to borrow money. Cheaper money means it is easier for companies to expand, invest in their business, or for new companies to take on debt to form and create new economic value. So when does the Fed want to stimulate economic activity? Well, they typically do it in response to economic slowdowns. And what is an economic slowdown? Well, a recession by definition. It's when the GDP contracts by two or more quarters in a row, then you have a recession. So with that in mind, remember that the yield curve is showing future expectations about what interest rates are doing. So if they expect in the future that interest rates are going to be cut, then that means that there's probably a recession on the way. Therefore, an inverted yield curve, which is showing that, is a good pre-indicator to a recession that might be happening. Now, I want to be clear. The inverted yield curve does not cause a recession. It is simply what market participants believe will occur in the future, and it's essentially a warning sign for future conditions. Again, an inverted yield curve does not cause a recession. Now you may be wondering, how reliable is this signal? Well, pretty good. Since the 1960s, the inverted yield curve has successfully predicted nearly every recession. Looking at the chart on the screen, there are a couple of exceptions. The inverted yield curve had one false positive where it predicted a recession would happen in the mid 60s that did not occur. And then secondly, the inverted yield curve did not signal there would be a recession for the first time recently. Essentially, it did not foresee the pandemic related recession in 2020. This makes sense given the extraordinary situation. The problems were induced from a public health pandemic perspective rather than a troubled business cycle, which is what preceded all other recessions in the last 60 plus years. Lastly, the last important thing to note is that the inverted yield curve does not specify the timing of when the recession will happen. Historically, we have seen recessions follow anywhere from 7 to 24 months after the yield curve inversion. At the timing of making of this video, the yield curve has been inverted since July of 2022. It is now June of 2023, a year later, but there have been no major signs of recession, i.e. no negative GDP growth quarters yet. So it remains to be seen if or when it will happen, but that is a little bit of history behind the inverted yield curve and why it has been considered a good predictor or signal of future recessions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so other people can find it and learn about inverted yield curves. And if you'd like to learn more about maybe the cracks in the current economy, take a look at the video on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.